Uh, but for Substance Painter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and we're going to go to File, New, and we're going to go to File, Select, and we're going to go to our folder here, and here's our All Bake Low, and let's go ahead and switch this document resolution 2048. Uh, if you're doing UDIM files, uh, you can do a texture set for, for UDIM, we're not doing that. Uh, the Compute Tangent Space Per Fragment, if you're going on UE4, you probably want to turn that on. If you're going into Unity, you go ahead and leave that disabled. Now there is something I should clarify. They're going to see this Compute Tangent Space Per Fragment. If you go into their documentation settings, it's going to tell you, if you're planning on going into the Unity engine, you're going to want to do OpenGL, which is not the DirectX format, so it's OpenGL or DirectX. So if you're going into Unity, go ahead and do DirectX, or I'm sorry, OpenGL. You're going to have Compute Tangent Space Per Fragment turned uh, disabled, so turn it off. And then if you're going to UE4, go ahead and do DirectX for your normals and check on Compute Tangent Space Per Fragment. If you really want to get into it, there's a really cool, uh, I'll link you guys to this, uh, article by Ben Golis, and he goes into all the little reasons why you want those options checked on or checked off and what it's doing behind the scenes. Uh, another really good point that he brings up that I should mention is that when you're exporting and you want to have full control over when you're exporting, say, out of Maya or any program, really, uh, if you triangulate before you export and you use that mesh in engine, you're going to have complete control over your edges. If you don't do that and you rely on the auto triangulation of the engine versus what you're exporting and then importing into Substance Painter or any baker like Marmoset, you're probably going to have mix, mi mismatched results. Uh, it's not going to triangulate the exact same way in engine as it does if you were to export these quads in Maya, let's say, and allow the baker to triangulate under the hood and the engine to tri triangulate under the hood. It might choose different directions for your edges, and then you're going to get uh, your normal map's not going to look so great. So if you want to play it safe, and I would suggest doing this, go ahead and let's take our low unstacked. Go ahead and duplicate that off, and we'll hide this, because we always want to have a version of it quadded out. Uh, but then we'll say this one is like our bake version here, and then you can just select all of these here. Go up to Mesh, Triangulate, and boom, there you go. So now everything's triangulated. You control these triangles. So now when I export this and bake to it, it's going to bake to these triangles. And then if I go ahead and export this and put this into engine, it's going to have these exact triangles in engine. So everything will be nice and compatible. And as far as OpenGL or DirectX, uh, Unity's OpenGL, Unreal Engine's DirectX, Maya's OpenGL, 3D Studio Max's DirectX, Blender's OpenGL. Um, so I'm just going to leave these the default. You can always change these later, but we'll go ahead and hit OK. And here's our entire object, but what you're going to see is over here we have our different uh, mat IDs here. I'm going to switch this. Right now we have uh, 2D and 3D. Uh, at the same time, we're just going to do 3D only for now. And we're going to want to bake our objects here. We're going to go to Texture Set Settings. Go in here to Bake Mesh Maps. And we were able to bring in everything as one object with different texture sets. And by that, I just mean I can go in here, I can turn off the eyes, and this can get a separate material. So if you wanted to do like an emissive shader, if we talk about shaders for a minute, uh, you can change this to a completely different shader instance in here. Um, and also, these are the texture sets that are going to be 0 to 1. So teeth, uh, if we go in here to our 2D only view, you can see here's our teeth, and we can paint on these. Here's our skull. Here's our iris, and then here's our eyes. So again, we'll go back to 3D only. Now let's talk about baking our maps. Uh, if you were uh, baking this externally and you didn't want to bake in Substance Painter, it's easy enough. Uh, I'm going to see if I have... Oh yeah, I do have these. So these are the bakes that I had. So um, And you could have... You don't have to do PSDs. You can export those as uh, PNGs or targets or whatever makes sense for what you're baking. But, uh, for instance, I can go through here. I'm going to bring in the skull normal and the skull AO. I'm just going to drag it onto my shelf down here, and I need to tell it, and you can select multiple if you want to, you can select both of these and say these are textures, and I want to import them into my, you can do it through your current session, like while this is open and I'm working, I want it imported, but as soon as I close it down, I want it gone, or I can say I want this to bring in with my project, so while I'm using, uh, while I'm saving and using this project, I want it to be available to me, or I can save it my shelf and it'll be available anytime open Painter. So I'm going to say project, hit import, and then right here, you're going to see I have my skull and my normal in here, and then I just need to drop it on here. So we need to make sure that we have our skull selected. So if you hold down Control, Alt, and right click, you can go through and you can select, say, the teeth or the skull or the iris or the eyes. So we're going to select the skull here, and we're going to take this normal map, and we're just going to drop it right on that normal map section. And there we go. So applied. And then same thing for the ambient occlusion map. Let's go ahead and drop it right on there.